Now, if only he has the full shilling when it comes to the time. Two and a half mil and an expensive looking party to boot. These people sure know how to throw their money around. I'm so sorry, Cam. I'm on my way. Tonight, that's calm. Finally sealed the deal after three years, eh? 
Read them and wait, bitches. Don't get too attached to that ring or the one after, sweetie. I was wearing a wedding ring not so long ago and look at where I am. But enough of me being a downer. Cheers to a happy engagement! What about you, Marianne? You're 30 years old and you still haven't got yourself a man. And you guys know I have a very busy schedule. I don't have time for that. Oh, come on. That's a lame excuse and you know it. You need a man who'll take care of you and you need it now. Maybe some hunk will be your house of you while you rake in the dough. I'm quite capable of taking care of myself. Who needs a Mr. Right? Hey, look at me. I'm Marion McCullough, a lawful neutral cleric with nine points in wisdom and eight in charisma, but I can't get myself a date. Actually, maybe she isn't looking for a Mr. Right, but a Mrs. Right. Oh, my Marianne, we still love you even if you're in the closet. That would explain some things. How do you know you don't have a ring anymore? Maybe you two can be together and I don't have to worry about my best girls being alone. What are you on about? There's nothing to explain. Will I be all yours then? Will you be making me feel like a woman? Sorry. Me too. Hey, no hard feelings, right? Sexy. Please don't stand up on my account. I already like what I see. Fancy a drink? It'll be on me. Want some between the sheets? Sex on the beach? I'm talking cocktails, of course. I'd rather order some blue balls or some AMF if you don't mind. the history of chocolates? Did you know that chocolate candy was introduced in 19th century England as a healthier alternative to alcohol? No, enough of the history lesson. Come on, Mint. You know and I know what you came here for. Come on. There must be something that gets you going. Hmm, there 
this something? But I don't think you can handle it. Oh, I'm pretty sure I can handle whatever it is. My place isn't too far from here. I won't take care of you if it ends up being too much for you. And no one will be able to hear you if you try to scream. You sure you want to go down that road, pretty boy? Wouldn't have it any other way. Wait. What is it now? <laughs> We're both drunk. And? This is wrong. Don't you think it's a bit fucked up that we're about to have sex and we're just calling each other by the drinks that we had? How messed up are we? Doll, shut up with the ethics and morality talk. It is seriously putting me out of the mood. If you want to leave now, Whiskey, I understand. I mean, with how smashed you are, it'd probably be best for you to sleep the night unless you want to be mugged. But I won't stop you. And this isn't going to happen. Bloody hell. What are you doing then? You have a guest in your home. Put the damn kettle on. Dandelion tea if you have it. But I suppose all you have are those shitty tea bags from the store. Just so you know, whatever is going on right now is a lot stranger and fucked up than the one night stand. We are two messed up individuals by your logic. Everything is messed up, if you ask me. War? Terrorism? Famine? Poverty? Loved ones and loved lost? Oh, this whole world is a cesspool. Rich people.
Hello, sailor. Why don't you come to Mama? I think I had this first, miss. This isn't exactly light reading, miss. I mean, do you even know which architect was at the forefront of 18th century Irish architecture? Edward Lovett Pierce, who established the Palladian style through his work with Castletown House and the Irish Houses of Parliament. This bridge was destroyed in this year to delay French troops while under the regency of Mary of Guise. Going right to the obscure ones, aren't you? Easy enough. Tullybody Old Bridge in Clackmannanshire, Scotland, on the January of 1560, if we want to be specific. Maria McCulloch, my desire for potatoes doesn't quite match what the stereotypes suggest. Rebecca Gales. The Scots' supposed hatred for the English wasn't enough to stop me from teaching their little spawns. <laughs> History teacher, then? Got it in one. No wonder you gave me a run for my money. Now, if we're talking about architecture, I'd blow you out of the water. You're from where? Luxburn Uni? Oh no, just St. Goretti's. And I'm guessing you're an architect, if you're so confident about the subject. Interior designer, Miss Gales. Please, just call me Rebecca. You aren't one of my students, are you? Marianne, then. So, I've never seen you before. I'd like to think I've met every history aficionado in town. I blame the rock I've been hiding under, of course. That, and I'm usually only here on the weekdays if time allows. Work often has me meeting clients on the weekends. Hmm, that must be interesting work. It allows for some creative freedom, sure. But it's like working with children sometimes. Though you probably have it harder working with actual children. The hardest part is convincing them that your idea is their idea. That sounds exciting. It is! But isn't that true for any workplace, though? We just cross our fingers and hope there aren't any man-children in charge of important things. Any big projects right now? I can't imagine that interior designing is a frequent thing. I'm working on the Ermengarde Mansion. Lucky me. That mansion. Inta. Wonderful. Breathtaking. I can't wait to start in it. Now that is beautiful architecture. So, do you have a portfolio or anything I can take a look at? I'd love to see your designs. Maybe you have some on a tablet? I've met some designers before and they're always going crazy over these virtual room apps or another. A tablet? <laughs> Please, Calacrates didn't need those silly eye tabs when he built the Parthenon. I certainly don't need one to design a house. I do have an online portfolio, if you'd like. I can... Well, is something wrong? Lunch at the coffee house? Uh, sure, I can make it. I'm not too far, I can be there in ten. Sorry, I have to go and meet with some friends. It's fine. Totally fine. No need to even apologize. About the book... You know, I'm busy with work, so I might not even be able to take a peek at it anytime soon. You can go ahead and have it. 
But you'll have to ring me up when you're returning it just so I can snag it right away. Deal? Deal. Just message me during school hours, of course. You have a good day then. You too. Marianne McCulloch, Charlie Rose Design speaking. Rose Cooper here, Miss McCulloch. I hope I didn't catch you at a bad time or anything, but I just wanted to check in and tell you that we've got the clear to hand over the documents. Madam Wright told us that we should forward the floor plans to you. So, if I can just have your email, I'll be sending them your way. I'd actually like a physical copy of the floor plans. Oh, I, I suppose that's fine. I'm not at the office right now, but I can inform Miss Santos of your request. I'll make sure to drop by the office after lunch if that's fine. Not a problem. Right. Well, cheers. Right. Cheers. La blessure se trouvant sans aucune sorte de conséquence. Still a lot better than working on another condo at least. I presume that Miss Cooper told you why I'm here, Miss Santos? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I just got back from lunch, you know? But it won't take too long, don't worry. Of course it won't. This whole project has established itself to be a matter done in haste. I do hope it doesn't mean that people are being careless in their duties. You know, we usually just email these things. I prefer the real thing. I know what you mean. Digital painting is nice, but nothing beats the smell of real paint. Not that I go and smell paint like a crazy person, but, you know, the real thing is different. Yes, nothing is quite like the real thing. I feel a bit silly saying it out loud because I've never lived in a big house, let alone a mansion. But during the tour, I had the distinct impression that the rooms were... bigger. Maybe the scale is wrong? It's not much of a problem. And it is an old house. So 
So, do you want a coffee? The one from the staff room is pretty decent. There's really no need. I'm sure you have rules against it. Rules against bringing someone coffee? That's ridiculous, and even if there were regulations against it, nobody's really here to tell Sir John. I've already brought two mugs, and I'm not going to drink them on my own. <laughs> Come on. Yes? You have something to say? Just thinking and speaking off the record. It must be fun what you do. You go to people's houses and you make them, well, pretty. You're sharing your art with them. It's a little bit more complex than that, but if you put it that way, it is fun. I wouldn't have done it for seven years if it wasn't a little bit fun, I guess. These big clients always have paintings in their homes. Do you have a supplier for art pieces? Clients usually support artists of their own choice. If they don't, I'm always happy to refer those that I know. That's cool. They're very picky. I don't think a hobbyist will have an easy time getting their work sold. Hey, I'll have you know I was a student of the fine arts. And yet here you are selling property. Maybe you weren't a very fine student of the arts. It's not like I had a choice. Well, if you're thinking of commissioning your paintings, I'll have to see your work first. Oh, it's not... I didn't mean it like that. I don't have any paintings. Really? You sounded a lot like you still did art or want to. Now I'm starting to worry that you might just like the smell of paint. I'm not a paint huffer, sheesh! I just mean I don't make much anymore. I don't really have the time for it. The tools and materials aren't exactly cheap either. Everything has a price. It sounds like you're making excuses for something you're presumably passionate about. If you really want to practice art, a little out of your wallet isn't much. It's not that simple. It's not? Life's simple. People just like to make it complex. Speaking off the record, I have some advice for you, kid. Either go for what you want, or stop thinking about it when you have something else. That is unless you enjoy making yourself miserable, then by all means. You know, if you wanted to look at the floor plans without me bothering you, you could have just said so. Would you have left me alone? We'll never know now, will we?
I do apologize if I kept Mr. and Mrs. Wright waiting. But I'm here now, and I'm ready, so if I may, where are they? They've just woken up, but they should be down soon. I'm surprised to see you made it through security, and only five minutes late. You said I'd be through security soon, and it took half an hour. Define soon in this context. I'd make myself comfortable if I were you. I'm going to go and put the kettle on. About the tea, I don't want to intrude or anything. The sir does not like being woken up by the whistling. But who am I to deny tea to a guest? Could I at least put the telly on? As long as you don't watch some silly soap opera, the LBC News would be fine. The William Walker Show is on too if you prefer that. Not that I watch it, but my husband does. The remote is under the coffee table. Uh, oh, sure. Maybe I'll be lucky and catch the doc on. I heard they're having reruns of the classics and I want to see the second meet sixth in Spain. If not, just the news then. Thank you. I'll let you get on with your cooking now. The batteries must be dead. <gasps> Mrs. Wright, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't see you. Uh, have you been standing there long? No, I just came down and saw you were having a hard time with the telly. We must have forgotten to change the batteries. Are you alright, dear? You're looking a bit pale. Haven't you had breakfast yet? No, I, I'm fine. I had breakfast already, Mrs. Wright. I just need... Well then, you mustn't have had enough breakfast. I'm all for a good diet, but that's the most important meal of the day. Johans is cooking up pancakes. Pancakes will make anyone feel better, he always says. We can sit down and tuck in. You'll feel right as rain once we get some fluffy, syrupy goodness in you. And are you sure you're fine, Marianne? You're shaking. I just remembered something, that's all. It's nothing to worry about. Are you sure? I am all ears if there is something bothering you. I don't mind a good story, and I don't want it to affect your work performance. Gossipy wagon, isn't she? She should just leave you alone. It's not like you need her. You don't have to worry about that, Mrs. Wright. I say business stays business, and anything else can stay in the doghouse until I'm done with work. talk about your work then if you'd like it's on your time after all i've been told many good things about you and i've seen some of your work before 
Others speak very highly of your work etiquette. Yet I've never heard of you before. Not even a whisper of the Macaulay name. Well, I've only been in Luxbourne for four years. Tried to make it big in London for nearly three years before. And I've only been working these high quality projects for the past year. I imagine it hasn't been easy. I can't see why you've moved from London to Luxbourne now. Job vacancies were fewer at the time and I had a lot of competition in London. Let's not even talk about the living costs there. But I'm glad I moved here, even if it hadn't been smooth sailing. If I had it easy, I probably wouldn't be working projects like these. Why even bother explaining to her? She won't understand. She's practically born with a silver spoon in her mouth. The woman could probably snap her fingers and have servants attending to her beck and call. Good morning, Luke, darling. Good morning, ladies. What a wonderful morning it is that I wake up to such a beautiful sight. I do hope you two are getting along. Mmm, hmm, I smell pancakes. I do hope you two are considering a diet just so I can have them all to myself. Don't be a pig, Luke. You eat all of those and you might stop fitting into your tight suits. What? what, what, what? I'm not a pig. You don't think I'm a pig, do you, Marianne? I don't know, Mr. Wright. I'm an interior designer, not a zoologist. The only styles she must be familiar with are statement of works. Well, don't be a bore. You two might not be in a rush, but I'm going to go ahead and feast. <laughs> if you dawdle too long, he'll hog all the syrup. Come on then, we can discuss business over food. You know, I was a tiny bit serious when I said I wanted a helipad. And you're not serious about the greenhouse, the vineyard, and the stables? Well, I do want those too, but I know you'll agree to those. We're talking about interiors here, honey. You don't handle exterior designs and... Whatever handles those sets of projects do you, Marianne? I'm able, actually, and willing to take a project of that nature. I was an architect in Ireland before. Of course, that's another contract entirely. I also suggest we finish the house itself before working on any additions to the rest of the property. There won't be any problems about ownership this time, will there? Pardon if I'm crossing a line, but the acquisition was rather quick. Oh, don't you worry. We've got everything sorted this time around. I've talked to Miss Cooper and Mr. John from BRC, oh, as well as the old owners. Everything has been paid in full and all we're waiting for is the paperwork from the land registry. They're letting us move in as soon as we please. It's not like they were living there in the first place. That's good to hear. The problems that could arise from renovating another person's home would be... Well, let's not dwell on it. First off, we'll want to know how you want the place to look. It's pretty furnished as is, but I understand if you want to modernize the whole thing. Actually, I'd prefer to keep the place looking as it is. But at the same time, I want modern appliances. You worked on the Ludgate's Christchurch summer residence. I do remember there being an oven I thought was a simple draw before. Make them look vintage, antique, blend in with the rest of the decor. Customize appliances then. I can't find someone for that and if you can't tell me what you specifically want, it'll hasten up the process. We're talking about electronic appliance manufacturers. If you have a preferred brand to work with... Splendid! So, what is next on our agenda? All the other interior designers we've hired in the past did not have us this involved. We'll have to figure out what you want to do with the rooms. Here, we can have a quick run through. What is that little room next to the master's bedroom? Oh, uh, as far as I could tell when I saw it, it's a second bedroom of sorts. Used, apparently, for the ladies in waiting who has served Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. Which is strange, as that isn't the norm for these sorts of houses. Well, we're not stuffing Johans in there. He won't fit. You don't suppose we could turn it into a walk-in closet and a dressing room? I love fashion, but do we really need 
need to turn an entire room into a walk-in closet, dear. We'll have large closets and a wardrobe in the bedroom already. Says the one who takes three-fifths of our closet. Well, what do you suggest we do with it? I thought a utility room of some sort would be nice. A craft room where I can do fun things. Or maybe a children's room might be nice. You know, for when Kylie comes over. Or if Rochelle visits once she's had a baby. One, you are not inviting that witch. And two, there's a whole mansion for Kylie to play in. We don't need a children's room, and you don't even do arts and crafts. I'd like to turn the guest's room and the study into my personal office, by the way, if you don't mind. You can turn it into a personal office if I can have my utility room. It's just the one room of the many. I'm taking that room for myself, no matter what you say, dearie. So you might as well take this deal. You're always out doing business anyway. The real problem is the theater. Whatever are we going to do with all that space? Fine, we could turn it into our own personal cinema, I suppose. Might as well have it, if you plan on not having a telly in the parlor. Yes, well, I don't want guests to be glued to the telly when they come over for a meal and some tea. By the looks of things, we can keep the rooms as what they are on the ground floor, though. The ballroom would be perfect for parties. Do we really need a dining hall, though? I don't suppose we can't convert it into a garage. What for? You can park your cars outside. What about that room? Right there, in the northeast corner. That's sleeping quarters for the household help? Oh, that is perfect! Johans will be glad if we have other staff members who stayed in. It'd be convenient so they don't have to make the trip from Luxbourne to the mansion when they're needed. You'll definitely need a lot more people to maintain a property of this size. The mansion is really a lot bigger than I thought. Look at all these rooms. I didn't even know there was a music room next to the parlor because of what happened. There was a grand piano in there too, when we checked during the tour. Did you hear that, Luke? Maybe you can take up playing the piano again. Oh, you should have seen him when we were younger, Marianne. It's not like I was very good with the thing. Oh, hush you. You were no Mozart, but I loved hearing you play nonetheless. He'd come over to my home and he'd play such fun tunes. He'd sing too and I'd dance and it was just... Anyway, what do you think of these plans, Marianne? Are we not even going to consider one of my requests? Not even just a closet or just a garage? Now, that isn't fair, is it? You're not the only one who's going to be living here. I hardly see how that's unfair. I told you you're getting your office and your theater, the greenhouse, the vineyard, and the stables. That sounds fair, does it not, Marianne? Mr. Royce, your plan isn't quite feasible from an architectural perspective. I'm not even sure how much we can do without closer inspection. Well, the one about the garage, at least. A walk-in closet is easy enough, but the garage? See, a garage isn't architecturally feasible and it isn't going to be financially sound as well. We're already going to spend a lot on your other requests. You have several acres of land to park on already. What? Did you calculate that on the fly? Financially sound my foot, you're probably just thinking up of imaginary numbers. Might I remind you that I was a financial manager? I also looked over and approved the expenses of our other houses. I know the rough cost of these things by now, love. Masters in business administration, major in accounting. Sometimes I think you forget that I'm not as dumb as I act. Business Administration and Accounting? What university? Luxborn U, of course. Go Lux Dragons, red and gold. Excuse me, how about we move on this chit-chat ahead and do whatever else needs to be done sometime today? I had to cancel my appointments for this, you know. We might as well do a proper inspection with the designer this time, just to get it out of the way. Yes, no time like the present. You want a thorough inspection? Might as well do it now. We actually took another look at the property yesterday, though it was brief. But I'm sure you would want to see it yourself. 
to spot anything we might have missed. Alright, Johans, we're going to go in, but I want you to look around the place. Familiarize yourself with it. Know every nook and cranny, every inch of the lot. Go and see where we can put that vineyard and the other things we talked about. We'll want to know where to station security as well, so go around the perimeter and figure it out. Scouts a property and circles a perimeter on foot. You do know this is 46 acres of land, sir. Well, you are not driving a car over the grass. Put those long, spidery legs of yours to good use. I didn't hire you to stand around and look intimidating. Go, mush. Sometimes I think you hired me to make me suffer for your amusement. What do you think? Certainly we can't turn this area into a garage. It's Jacobian architecture. I'd say these would be pilasters and not buttresses, but you never really know. They really liked mixing up these elements. You could say it was pretty avant-garde at the time. We might hit a support beam if we're not careful. And in layman's terms? From what I see here, we could risk great damage to the house if we try to turn the dining hall into a garage. This will stay a dining hall then, but if I may have another request instead, at least spruce the place up with some flowers, some plants or something. I feel so old and dead in here. That's hardly unreasonable. Daffodils are a must, I presume. Of course, and I want a garden full of them. Now, if you excuse me, I'd like to look at the rest of the house. I'll just be around here downstairs, if anybody needs me. He's quite fond of them, you know. I can imagine. He looked terribly upset when we told him he can't have his garage. I meant the daffodils. We always have a vase full of them in every house we own. Somewhere, I'd like to think. They may be about his mother. He never talks about her. I don't even know her name. He likes to flatter, claim that they remind him of me, but he's always loved the flowers, even before we married. I'll go and snoop about upstairs. You go and do whatever it is that you have to do.
Were you meaning to go in there? I'm afraid we won't be able to open it up today. Oh well, I wanted to, but it's fine. I can still survey the rest of the place. Apologies, but a key was missing when they were handed over. They told us that they'd get right back to us with it. What? But aren't they supposed to hand over all the keys once property changes hands? That can be grounds to file a complaint. They were already kind enough to let us move in so early. There's no need to raise a fuss about it. Worst comes to worst, we can call for a locksmith. Flowers. Yellow flowers. Daffodils, dandelions and sunflowers in the sort all up front. Just a whole garden of them. They'll make the house look lovely, won't they? Of course. A garden is a wonderful addition to any home. Yes, it must be nice. We're still talking about the gardens, yes? I mean, not having to worry about what another person thinks of you. What do you mean by that? Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I didn't marry Luke. There'll be no fights about walking closets or silly helipads. I could do with this place as my heart desires until there's nothing but content. Then again, I wouldn't have bought this place if it wasn't a gift for him. I probably wouldn't even be in Luxbourne if it wasn't for him. Maybe I would have moved to London. Manchester or Birmingham. I might have even left the country altogether. France, Germany, Spain, Canada, Sweden, even America. The possibilities would have been endless. I'm sorry, I must sound so petty and ungrateful. I do love him so very much, even if he can be a bit difficult at times. Oh no, not at all. I'm just confused why you're telling me this, of all people. Just a whim, I think. Just flights of fancy, that's all. Don't you ever think about one decision you've made in your life and wonder how much would change if you chose to do things differently? I try not to dwell on the past, ma'am. Must have been quite the pair, Mrs. Wright. Hannah Evans and Luke Wright taking Luxbourne by storm. At least, that's what I've heard. <laughs> quite the celebrity couple, according to all the newspapers. But it wasn't always that way. Father certainly didn't approve of him at first. Why, he told me to stay away from him. Told me that I was too good for him. That's the usual overprotective dad speak, though. But of course, you know that. And what did you tell him? Considering you are Mrs. Wright now, you or the mister must have convinced him otherwise. Yes, well, I told him I was my own woman and I could decide who was deserving of me or not on my own. Thank you very much. That never stopped him from making sure Luke couldn't get anywhere near me without an escort and a guard anyway. Though he certainly wasn't that overprotective when I was dating Jack. Maybe your father considered this Jack a more capable man? I doubt it. Jacqueline was nowhere close to being any sort of a role model when we were in college. She was rebellious, reckless and immature. Everything I wasn't. But she was quite the charming, stunning woman and I think that made her quite likeable. Surprised, Marianne. The first thing anybody needs to know about me is that I go after what I want. And when it comes to who I love, it doesn't matter to me whether they're a man or a woman. Legs, we called her, because of how often she was running about because of one thing or another, climbing up walls in, what do they call it now? Parkour. And also because of her, well, legs. And you went after her? 
Not right away. When I first met her, I wanted nothing to do with her. She was so improper and uncouth. But I slowly realized that didn't mean she was a bad person. On the contrary, she did many a good thing and was always so nice to others. I found myself confused. I couldn't figure out if I wanted to be her or wanted to be with her. So I approached her, told her that I might have fancied her. And your father didn't mind? He must have thought it was my form of rebellion. But he never watched out for Jack as much as he watched out for Luke. If I didn't love my father so much, if he hadn't raised me right, I think I might have told him to bugger off. He's never been more attentive of me than when I started bringing home dates. I'm sure he loved you very much. <laughs> I suppose I've taken too much of your time with my silly stories. You still have much to inspect. I still have most of this floor, and I'll want a quick run through of the ground floor again later. I shan't keep you from your work any longer then. Just call me if you need anything. I'd like to look around myself. Finally, some peace and quiet. Thought the old biddy would never leave. In here, Marianne. Come on, I have something to show you. Ugh, stop your crying. You know better than to listen to Maeve. Why, I ought to teach that butterface a lesson. Wait, no, lass. I don't want you getting into trouble with the sisters again. Relax. It's not like I'm going to stomp her and her lackey's arse is flat like last time. Come on, let's just go back to our dorm room. I don't want to be on my Tobler while you go get yourself punished. You'll be fine. Gibbs there with you. I'll eat all the chocolates stashed away in your closet if you go. I can get Mar. Just don't go complaining to me if you get a tummy ache because of that. Well, you don't want to get detention on a weekend, do you? It's a Friday. We can go to town and have some karaoke. And we can have a go at druids and demons again. You're not going to miss that just because of Maeve, are you? You have a point. I'll just kick her arse on Monday then. That's not what I mean! I know what you mean, Em. Wait. Where are you going? You just told me you wouldn't cause trouble. I still have something to do. Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to burn down her dorm room or something criminal like that. I'm just going to talk to her. Maybe I'll make it so that her room smells like a dog's air biscuit. That'll make it an excellent weekend. I'll see you in a bit, Marianne. Lots of tobblers.
morning, students found a fifth year dead. Assumed to have fallen from her dormitory window. May have had a hook and I kicked the bucket, didn't she? Ding dong, the witch is dead! But at least Maeve had the courage to admit how she felt about me. <laughs> you, on the other hand, can't even look me in the eye. This isn't real. You're not... You're dead! I'm dead. Because of you. And you won't even look at me. Look at me. I'm so sorry, Lorraine. I... Look at me! Mrs. Wright, just feeling a little woozy and lightheaded is all. Let's get you somewhere to sit down then. Come on, don't worry, I have you. <clears throat> I think I've had enough looking around. If it's all right with you and Mr. Wright, I'll meet you outside. If you're sure, I'll have the car start it. Do you need assistance heading downstairs? I'm all right, ma'am. Just go on ahead and I'll be right there. About time, what took you so long? A minute longer and I'd think the house swallowed you all up. Oh, hush, dear. I'm sure she has her reasons. Marianne doesn't seem the sort to idle. Sorry, I was just checking on something important. See, business is business and they take time, love. You should know that better than anyone. So, Marianne, what do you think? Are you the woman for the job? I know we already signed papers hiring you, but I want to be 100% sure that you are committed.
It's certainly an interesting project. You can be sure I'm seeing it through the end. Such dedication! Oh, I do love the determination. You were always determined like that, weren't you? Marianne, work, work, work. She'll work herself to death. See, see, she doesn't listen. That's all she did. Look at what happened to me. More's the pity. Life goes on and goes out, and she doesn't even see it. Do you think she'll even realize when she's kicked the bucket herself? Likely. Is that any way to live at all? She might as well be dead. Cruel fate that she's alive and I'm... well... Just waiting for something lewd to happen, weren't you? You know she will not admit it. She thinks it wrong. You've said it so yourself. Yes. She thought me wrong, impure, abnormal, because I loved her. Thoughts you try to deny, girl. All those desires you bury beneath that sickening guilt. You act the martyr when you turn the bed you lie in into your own hedonistic hell. You are nothing but a tainted soul with filth-stained flesh held together by falsehood and pride. Good morning, Barothio. Who's a good kitty? Are you hungry? Is that why you woke me up? <coughs> I'll be leaving you again today, Beth. So you behave and make sure not to shred up my new covers, okay? And don't worry, I didn't forget tomorrow is Black Cat Day, so I'll throw you a party. But only if you behave like a proper lady.
Mrs. Wright. I hope everything has been to your liking thus far. Good morning, Marianne. It has been delightful and these men have been very helpful. Look at all this. It's so busy here. I'm getting tired just looking at them go. No complications so far with the movers or the previous owners of the mansion, I hope? If anything, the only one being problematic is Luke, if I'm to be honest. He can be such a diva, but I do like that about him. Oh, do be careful with that mirror. We wouldn't want anyone getting hurt because of broken glass. Why are you even having it carried around? Oh? Hmm, you did say you didn't want the mirror, and I... <laughs> keep getting distracted by it. If I'm going to turn the study into my office, I'd rather not have it there. Where can we put this? Well, you are not putting it in our room. Why don't you go, I don't know, put it in the wine cellar for now? We can figure out to full store it in the attic or somewhere else later, yes? You heard her, boys. To the cellar it goes. Mush! Marianne, dear, have you had breakfast yet? Well, I do believe it would be considered brunch at this hour. Oh, yes, Mrs. Wright, I... I you must join me. Johans has already been breaking in the kitchen, as they say. I do not see the others settling down for a meal anytime soon. Someone might as well enjoy the food while it's hot. And that someone might as well be us. If you insist. I'd really like to thank you for inviting me to breakfast, Mrs. Wright. But I already ate, so I should really go back to work. Nonsense! You arrived so early, you must not have gotten a proper meal. Sit, sit! I'd situate us in the dining hall, but it is a mess right now. But no, really, how have you liked it so far? Oh, it has been wonderful, believe me. Everything is going smoothly, too. It has been a long time since I've worked on something on this grand a scale. Nowadays, everyone is about condos and flats, living in the city where every room is an identical box. Believe me, this is very refreshing. We lived in a condo before this, Marianne. Uh, I didn't mean any insult, I... It's fine, sweetie. Look at you, all frazzled. I was just pulling your leg. Luke wanted that penthouse when we got married, and you can thank him for purchasing this place as well. Don't be fooled. I'm just the treasury. I wouldn't be able to make a purchase this grand without his seal of approval. I see. That's it. That's all you have to say. But I really don't know what to say, Mrs. Wright. We were talking of no topic in particular, and... Luke. We were talking about Luke. About him not eating breakfast with you? About him treating me as if I were some treasury!
I won't speak a word, Mrs. Wright. Not only am I contractually obliged to, it would also go against my principles. This is no one else's business but your own, and it should be kept between the two of you, and whoever you wish to seek counsel from. Please, Marianne, you have to understand. These sort of affairs, if anyone were to know this, they could just twist it and we'll be ruined. All I ask for is your silence on the matter. Well, I'm keeping that information confidential as well. Thank you. Madam, the photographer from Luxury Living is here. This was a wonderful meal, Marianne. You're free to return to your duties. I must excuse myself. It was my pleasure. And thank you for the food as well. My kitchen. No kinder allowed. Little men running around with knives especially. We do not want any accidents to happen now, do we? Good? Good. I hope I meet the age restriction, or at least the height restriction, because I'm asking to be let in here. You are allowed inside, McCulloch, but not the little ones. That smells good. Want to wrap up some for me to go? If there are any left, one can't go wrong with fish and chips. Everyone loves them, even my husband, and he's American. before you break glass. Don't do that again, ever. What was with that reaction? Were you really scared? Has Johans been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare people. Isn't that right, Brother Gurium? Now that we're alone, Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. Don't tell me you believe in that tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get you. That's a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright, you haven't noticed anything weird here? That depends on your definition of the word weird. Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Well, maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. Why do you ask? 
Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I guess the mansion is just strange for me. It's a unique project. No strange men or women looking about then? None that I know of. But I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything, anyone suspicious, and you report it. Immediately. I think that goes without saying. Join Mrs. Wright? You're starting to look strange. If you want your picture taken so badly, I'm sure the photographer would oblige. What is it that you want to do then? Film. Documentaries mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on the thing, actually. We need to get you away from the butler. You're starting to sound like him. No, I'm not joining Hana for an interior design magazine photo. What am I, a piece of furniture? Look, do the lot of you have anything else crucial to do today? Marianne. There are still some little things to do. It isn't the end of the day yet. Yes, yes, but you're paid hourly, aren't you? Per day? Really, I don't care. You and the others can just take off for the day. the boss. My being paid by the day aside, I won't be held responsible for any significant delay caused by your decisions. I'll try to get around that, of course, but I'll just remind you of the fact. Whatever. Take forever with the house. I don't give a bloody damn. Don't you worry, you're still getting your money. Just sort off. Go crawl around a pub and find yourself a good lay. Maybe I will. Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Foncy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? The foreman is looking for you. The Bratwurst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. He just wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. for something.
Mama, will ya? I gotta go check on her. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. All right, all right. What is it? Do you need someone to help you get home? Bartender, pour the wine. Oh, I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. Firm case. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. So, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal and dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? Luke Wright. You know the guy. And don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. That smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a wad of cash on the counter after having too much whiskey counts as tipping. Why are you asking? He dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. Is this smart talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Private conversation here, lady. Don't worry, Holmes, she's clean. And she might be able to help you with your, uh, predicament. Course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her... I don't know, suspect? Say you have a little faith in me, why don't ya? I don't have much and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come running to me for business. Yoo-hoo, still right here, fellas. Five feet eleven, can't miss me. <laughs> I'm like Shorty over here. What's with that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg. What with that fancy coat of yours? Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are you? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne McAuliffe. I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhyme. Anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke Wright, right? Or something. Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you, even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. <laughs> you wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking, not Marianne. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is up. 
abso fucking lutely frustrating. One moment, he's an absolute dickhead. And then, he's acting like an actual decent human being the next. I just can't figure him out. I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat arse straight up. So, Luke Wright, have you noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Anything peculiar? Of note? You're the one being peck pe peachy right about now, Holmes. But nah, nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich, smarmy arseholes and then some. So, Holmes, I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Is it Hannah? Did she pay you to look if he's been cheating or some such? Hannah's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? How is she or how is she? Well and good. Definitely the nicer of the two and sexiest sin to boot. Not a private detective then? Are you from one of them tabloids wanting to know if the Luke Roy doesn't know how to put his pants on right? Mmm, pants. I take the pants off of... <laughs> I'm asking you if you've noticed any odd behavior from her. Odd behave... you what? I wonder how she'd be drunk. I can just imagine her like the giggly sort. What do you think? These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What do you expect? She's smashed. Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. This'll be dismissed and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. Maybe it's about time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. That's not an option. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. Something, something. As och de! No wonder Mr. Wright likes it so much. It's as fishy as he is, rotten bloke. Maybe that Santos girl is really onto something, eh? Suspicious shite, I'm telling you. Explains why she's so reluctant. What do you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Take your hands off me, pipsqueak. I'm not a lady who's shaken or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair. But it's just like I said. Are you sure you aren't brain damaged or deaf? Santos girl from BRC showed us this creepy letter. You know, just like those spam stuff you get in your emails. And we thought it was some joke or that the girl was just a bit too green to handle a big sale like that. You should have seen the look on their faces when they saw it. Whiskey, that's Luke fucking right, you get me. And the missus didn't look too happy either. I should have taken a picture and posted it everywhere. When rich snobs give you that face? No wonder the Santos girl went all mental on us. Working with them does that, you know? I think I'm about to. I'm not mental yet, am I? Anyway, just like I said, in that man... Hey, you okay? <laughs> Holmes? You're looking a bit shaky yourself there. <laughs> you're cute, pretty boy. But I prefer blondies. Well, you're not exactly my type either, lady. But listen to me. If something comes up, don't do anything rash. If you think you're in danger or if you see anything suspicious, call me and the authorities as soon as possible. You understand me? That's 99... Nine
I know what the damn emergency number is. Right, 999. Good. Anyway, I have to run. See you, G. Oi, what about your drink, boy? I'll go put it on your tab then. Holmes boy always like that, G? Uh, pretty much. But what about you? I suppose I'll put your drinks on your tab too. Don't want you to spill your wallets when you look like you're close to spilling yourself. Yeah, and if it's fine by you, I think I'll go take a bit of a cat nap here. Just for a sec or two. Uh, go right ahead. I'll wake you when I close up shop. Come join us, Marianne. We won't bite. Unless you ask, that is. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvellous, and in such a short time, too. Well, I can't take all the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the Wright Mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Oh, no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. Don't you have a party? Mm, yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems and he's just trying to cheer him up. They've been married for a long time and they've hit a... How do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you and Mr. Wright, isn't it? Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle, but if the troubled husband with the neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party. Oh, you really must, Marianne. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. We'll see. So, if I can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later.
Schnell, hurry up, you snails. We are on a deadline and you are wasting my time. What are you doing here, Fraulein? This is not the place for guests or in an architect right now. I request you leave. I was just looking around for any last minute things, yes? Yes, you have been doing that a lot. Looking around, snooping about. Now is not the time for such things. If you're not careful, people might think you are up to something. Well, I'm not done yet. I actually need to go into the wine cellar. Just need a quick go at the place. So, just don't mind me. I I'll be out of your hair soon enough. Go outside. Enjoy the party. Bask in the praise and adulation they will no doubt shower you with when the madam speaks highly of you. Surely you've had enough of this stuffy old kitchen by now. You do not want to cause trouble. Both the Bratwurst and Hannah want this to be perfect. It would be a disservice and a disrespect to tow out of line and risk it being anything otherwise. And more importantly, I will be blamed for any failure that happens tonight. Please, I just... it's really important. Fifteen minutes. Nine. Ten minutes. Any longer and I'll pull you out of there myself. The Bratwurst will be furious if he thinks anyone is touching his precious wine without his permission. Thank you. This seriously means a lot. How does this even work? Mirror, mirror on the wall? Something? Anything? Going to leave me again then, are you? Are you that mad at me that you're just going to ignore me, Marianne? Look at me like that. Say something. Yeah, you have no idea how happy I am to see you. It's been so long. You don't look happy. I really am happy. But at the same time, I can't help but think about what happened. To you. And what does that mean? What are you saying? I don't know how this is possible. But whatever this is, it isn't real. You can't be real. I'm right here, aren't I? What other proof do you need? No, no. I see you. 
I hear you, I feel you. But even with all that, you can't be real. You just can't. I saw your body. I helped bury you. You're dead. Burying me wasn't the only thing you did. Don't you dare lie. But I'm going to be the bigger woman, aren't I? Let bygones be bygones. I'll forgive you. As long as you stay with me, Marianne. That's why you came down here, right? To find me? I should have been more honest back then, both to you and myself. I know it's too late. I'm sorry, but I can't stay with you. So what? You're going to leave me for some old trophy wife? That's it, isn't it? You're going to leave poor Amy Lorraine and go after the next rich, pretty blonde that you see. All these years, guilt has been my driving force. I felt so guilty for what I did, what I didn't do. But what I did, I did to me. The blood in my hands is mine, not yours. I broke your heart, not your neck. Don't you dare deny it! It was your fault! Because I loved you more than I dare to admit? Yes, that was my fault. But I never meant to hurt you like that. What are you doing? It's done. It's done. Oh, Lorraine. Forgive me, Lorraine. Well now, I should probably go back up there. Party to attend, rich socialites to do business with and food to eat. Mrs. Wright will be happy if I make some time for it anyway. I'm sorry, Lorraine. May you see God's light on the path. Come on, Mac. You really didn't think it would be that easy, did you? You get bonus points for trying, but... You should know an eight in charisma is not enough to turn on dead. That's not... You shouldn't be... What? After the mirror? Did you think just moving on will erase what you did to me? You're nothing but a murderer, Marianne. A murderer! Stay back. You're not real. Leave me alone. Stop! I'm trying to move on with my life, so why won't you let me? Please, just get out of my head and leave me be.
this been here? Oh, that smell. Oh, you're a nasty one, aren't you? Letter. 